Okay, let's get... <clears throat> There's a gnat in here that needs to be dealt with. Hi everybody, my name is Rosalie Kringer and welcome back to my channel, Back to Chubby. This video I want to start something new that I hope will be a weekly series um, in conjunction with my blog, um, which I will link down below. I want to call it Do It With Me Weight Loss. I want to provide you with the meal plans, the nutrition information, the shopping lists, things like that that I have and that I'm using to try and drop this weight. I'm going to show you some of the containers I use. I'm going to show you a couple of the tools I have, just one or two. And then I'm actually going to show you some of the meal prep so you can see what it looks like and see what a full day on this week's meal plan would look like. Um, and that meal plan is actually available as a free PDF on my blog, backtochubby.wordpress.com, and I, again, will link that down below. So if you head over there, you can find not only the meal plan, so like what you're going to eat in a day, but the nutrition information so you know exactly what that food is going to do for you in a day, and then also a shopping list so you can make one shopping trip and then hopefully have everything you need. Yesterday I filmed a different segment, sort of a vlog and a weigh-in, and if you saw that video you know then for whatever reason I was having a lot of camera problems and when I finally got my camera to work again it cut off the frame right at my eyebrows for some weird reason. Unfortunately part of what I filmed for meal prep I did yesterday and so the frame is also cut off for part of it. Before I actually start showing you meal prep, I'm going to show you a few of the things that I use and that I'm especially going to be using this week uh, for meal prep. Um, one of the things that you're probably going to need, especially if you're trying to do less expensive meal prep, is a can opener. So I got one of these, and I'll link it down in the description. It's actually also a safety can opener, so you see that there's no there's no blade on it, like I'm rubbing my finger on it and I'm not getting cut anywhere. So if you have children around and you're going to be meal prepping and you're going to have a lot of cans open on the table, this opens it so that it doesn't have a sharp edge. I actually don't have any kids, um, and that's something I'm going to talk about probably in the next video. Not the next video, a video. But I'm really clumsy, so I've been known to cut myself on cans, and I also, uh, some weeks will have tuna for lunch, and I give the cans afterwards to my cat, and he's clumsy, so he's cut his tongue and stuff on them before. So using something like this is just a lot safer, and it works really well, and it, you don't have to like crank it as hard and get that painful feeling in your thumb. Another thing that I use is these little cups and I'll put a link down in the description for them. This is two ounces and right now I've got salsa in it from a meal last week. Um, they're two ounces which is four tablespoons so if you have something that you want to measure out like salsa or sour cream or peanut butter or something usually a serving size is two tablespoons. These that I'm gonna link down below are uh, actually designed to be jello shots cups but they work great for this too and they're they're liquid tight or airtight rather so I mean they don't spill they don't leak I've thrown them in my bag and they don't nothing comes out of them um, the other type that I use is this and you can see here there's hummus carrots and then some sliced smoked turkey here um, this was when I was too lazy to wash a bunch of those little cups so you can also just throw them in a container with your uh, food and it's not really going to make a difference. These are 16 ounces, so two cups. So like if you have stew or soup or um, anything else that you need to measure liquid, this is a good alternative. They're also supposed to be, um, you know, air, t well they're, they are airtight, but they're supposed to be liquid tight and I guess they are. Like there's a little bit of condensation here that's not coming out, but I haven't had the chance to actually test them with like soup yet. So 
be careful with these. Um, but these are 16 ounces. You can also get them in 32 ounces, which are the big ones. Um, these are usually used at the deli. But you can get like a 25 pack of these. Was this a 25 pack? I don't know. I got a lot of them for very little money. So I'll link that down below. Um, and then these Jello shot cups or condiment cups, I'm gonna call them. I got 40 of them and 40 lids for like five bucks and they're reusable. And when you're meal prepping for like 36 meals and you have condiments for several of them, you're gonna need a lot of containers. So like uh, one week, my husband and I, we had basically like sort of a Chipotle bowl kind of thing. And we had salsa and then uh, plain Greek yogurt, which you can use instead of sour cream, in each of those. So that's 24 of these little things. And then we also had um, like hummus, and so that's another 12 things. So you need a lot of containers if you're going to meal prep. Um, then the other one I have is this is actually my breakfast I haven't eaten yet. Um, this is a another food safe microwave and dishwasher safe. I don't know if I said that, but these are also microwave and dishwasher safe. Reusable dishwasher microwave safe um, container. And they're also liquid tight. And um, this one is 38 ounces. So that's actually quite a bit of space. I don't know if you can tell how big this is, but you have to be kind of careful when you're putting the lid on because once you push it down, it'll click, but then you have to actually like run your finger along and click it all the way. Um, but like right now, this is a cup of fruit, two thirds cup of granola, and a cup of yogurt, and it's still got plenty of room. It's still got like an inch in here. So if you're prepping a bigger meal, like when I said we had those Chipotle bowls a couple weeks ago, um, we had a whole cup of rice, half a cup of corn, half a cup of black beans, half a cup of chicken, um, both of these fit in there, and there was still some extra space. So they're a good investment, I think. And I will also link to those down below. You can get a pack of 25 of them for about 20 bucks. But since they're reusable, they're a good investment, but also since they're, um, they're not like real Tupperware, so if you lose them, or if your husband leaves one in a hot car and just gets too nasty, to wash and you just want to toss it, it's cheap enough you can just throw it away. They're basically less than a dollar a piece. And the last thing I'm going to show you before I get meal prepping is this. Um, this is a veggetti, which is a fun word I think, which is, you know, vegetables and spaghetti. But it's a spiralizer and it can also do like thicker noodles, thinner noodles, or like ribbons. If you want to like cut a lot of carbs out, and carbs also tend to have a lot of empty calories and not a lot of nutritional value, then this is good for when you're like craving pasta. And that's actually what I'm going to be making this week. So um, we got one of these, and you basically um, do what it shows on the picture. You pop a zucchini or a cucumber or a sweet potato or cabbage or whatever you want in one end and then you just turn the little handle and it spiralizes it for you and it makes noodles that um, they last in the fridge for about six days if you put them in an airtight container you can saute them you can put whatever you would normally put on pasta on them I'm not gonna say that it tastes exactly like pasta because I'm not gonna lie to you but it's a good alternative and it tastes pretty good and um, so you'll actually see me use this here in a minute and I'll link to that below as well um, I'm gonna get set up and we will meal prep together okay, the first thing that you want to do is get all of your containers set out because it's gonna make it a lot easier to go faster um, and I'm gonna start by putting granola in the bottom of every container you want to start with the least sticky thing first so it's easier to clean your container later and so you get more out of it. Ha. 
after that, we're going to start by putting in Greek yogurt, and I just used plain vanilla Greek yogurt. You can get the individual serving sizes, but it's going to cost you a little bit more than just buying the big tubs and distributing it yourself. And then last but not least, I'm going to put some frozen strawberries in the containers. You can use fresh strawberries, but usually the frozen ones are a lot cheaper in my area, and they seem to last longer to me um, when I go ahead and put them in the refrigerator frozen. And then as they thaw, they give the yogurt some more flavor, and they just last longer. Um, then go ahead and pop a lid on all of your containers. Um, as the wheat goes on, the strawberries might get a little bit soggy, but they're perfectly fine to eat as long as you eat them within six or seven days. And you want to make sure that you get the lid on really well. I think all told this took maybe 15 minutes, if that, and then you have your breakfast for the week. For lunch, the first thing you want to do is get your eggs um, covered in water and boiling. And then while those are cooking, go ahead and get your containers out again because it's going to make it a lot quicker to have everything spread out before you. The first thing I start with is the cottage cheese. Um, if you don't mind all of your food touching, then these single container options are a good choice. Otherwise, you can use the divided containers you can also find on Amazon. And then I just roll the smoked turkey up, um, mostly just so it doesn't mix with a bunch of other stuff. I'm fine with my food touching each other. But if you roll it and stick it next to the cottage cheese, it sort of keeps most of the liquid in one side and keeps everything else from getting soggy. Then I'm going to go ahead and put tomatoes in. And I recommend not cutting them until you're ready to eat them because a lot of the flavor goes out and they can get kind of soggy. And then last but not least, I'm going to put in hard boiled eggs. You can peel them ahead of time, but to save time on prep day, I'm just going to pop them in in their shell. Um, it also makes it a little, little bit less stinky if you're taking this to work or school or something to have them still in the shell, but they'll last just as long either way with or without the shell in the refrigerator. And I know that these lunches look kind of um, beigey, but we'll be making up for that with um, having just a whole lot of vegetables for dinner and um, fruits and vegetables as our snacks throughout the day. This is just a good sort of protein pack to get you through um, the day and give you some more energy to bust through the afternoon. Make sure you get them um, sealed tightly and then you should have lunch that lasts for six days. The Vegetti works really quickly, so you just want to have a large paper bag or container lined with a paper towel and ready to go so it'll soak up some of the moisture in the fridge. The next thing we're going to do is divide up our kielbasa sausage, and for this week, each person is going to get basically half of this link divided into thirds, because I'm only going to be doing this particular recipe three nights this week. So once you get that chopped, it's time to add it to containers with our other ingredients. First thing is cream cheese, and I recommend putting the sausage on the bottom first because it won't stick to the container. So once you scrape this cream cheese on top of it, it's time for the um, plain Greek yogurt and grated parmesan. And then when you cook this, you'll just throw it into the um, same skillet you saute your noodles in 
and then put them on top. And this is what it looks like. It's delicious. I promise. For the next one, I'm going to use these pre-cooked um, chicken breast strips because they already come in two servings and then I don't have to mess with cooking or cutting them up. All I need to do is grab a baggie and put them in. And the reason I'm using a baggie instead of a container is because I'm not going to be heating them these up by themselves. I don't need a microwave safe container. I'm just going to dump them in um, a pan. I went ahead and cut up olives and added them to the bag and then to make sure that those bags don't get separated or fall behind something in the fridge, I go ahead and put them in the big baggie with the spaghetti. And it is also delicious. The last thing we want to do for supper is get your potatoes diced up. Um, and you can cut them as big or as small as you want. I would recommend that you use a metal tin lined with foil. I was just too lazy to find it, so I'm using this glass cooking dish instead. Then you're just going to toss it with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, maybe some garlic, any other things you want, and bake it in the oven for 20 or 30 minutes at 475. These didn't come out quite as golden brown as they should have because I didn't use a metal pan, but they're you know cooked to where you can cut them with a spoon. And so now I'll just divide that up. For snacks, I <laughs> just sort of divide the hummus up like pie, basically, because when it's cold, it's easy enough to just scoop it out in one piece and it's already pre-portioned, and then I just put it in a container. This is about how much celery you'll be eating all week. Um, once you chop it, just divide it into containers. I mean, I didn't measure real carefully, I just sort of split it up. And then you can either just put it in a container with the hummus in the bottom, or um, if you don't want to waste containers, you can put it in a plastic baggie and then put the hummus inside the baggie. But don't put the hummus in loose because you'll never get it out. Sometimes the baggies can also just pack better than the round containers. All right, so this is what we're going to eat in a day and it really is quite a lot of food because you're just going to snack throughout the day. <sighs> Alright everybody that just about does it. Um, that is meal prep for an entire week uh, on the meal plan that I've made for myself. I think it's probably important to say, but it should probably go without saying, that I am not a doctor or a dietitian, and um, everything that I'm putting together here is what I'm putting together. Um, and I'm doing the best I can, and I hope that it's helpful for somebody else. If you would, leave a comment down below and let me know if you're going to head over to the blog and get the nutrition information or the meal plan, or if you have a question, feel free to shoot me a message or leave a comment down below. I'm going to try and respond to all of my messages, but there's always a chance something will uh, slip through the cracks, or all the comments, rather. Again, I hope to do this every week. Hopefully next week I won't have such a hard time uh, with my cameras and with lighting and trains and whatever else might go wrong. So. Um, let me know if you want to see more of these. I mean, I'm going to be doing the prep anyway, so it's really not that much more of a hassle to go ahead and film it and let everybody know what's happening. I do think next week I'm going to try and transition a little bit to where I put out these videos like on a Sunday or a Monday because Sunday is my meal prep day, and then I'll do my vlog and my weight loss on a Friday or Saturday, like at the end of the week instead of the beginning of the week. For one thing, that gives me a little bit of time for any bloating I might have to go down after my cheat day. And for another, um, it just seems to make more sense for if somebody wants to be doing this along with me in the Do It With Me weight loss series, then um, for us to start the week together or at least close to the same time. So 
Let me know what you think. I hope you found this helpful. If it was a long video, I don't know because I haven't edited it yet. Um, thank you for hanging in there with me through some of the weird angles and the weird camera issues. And um, also, I guess I want to point out that I'm not sponsored by any of the products on here. I mean, I don't know why I would be that I've only put out like two YouTube videos, but I guess it's important to say that they aren't paying me to say what I've said about them. They're the things that I actually use and I've been using them for a few weeks. Um, next week I might also do a little bit of an introduction on some of the pointers that I've learned just in the past like month or so doing this because there's a few tips and tricks that make things go a little bit faster and um, some things I've learned not to do, some things not to combine, etc. So thank you guys very much for watching and for being so supportive in the last two videos and I hope to see you again next week.